Hi everyone, I'm Vicki at Creative Notions. Today I want to do some cross stitch and I want to take you along with me, especially those of you who don't know how to cross stitch or maybe whose eyes aren't able to cross stitch anymore. I want to show you some tips and tricks that I've learned over the years as we, as I've gotten older, that might help you. Here's the project that we're going to be making today. And it says grateful. It's really cute. And I'm going to set it aside for right now and then we'll talk about it later. This is the pattern that is in our March subscription bag. And this equals, or it will eventually end up being three and a half by 10 inches on 14 count Ada cloth. Now this is 14 count Ada cloth, but you can see that the holes in it are pretty big and it's pretty easy to see. Now you'll need a piece of Ada cloth that's at least 10, 10 and a half inches or 12 inches big. And then you're going to need some floss and I'm using DMC floss. This one's number is 3607 and we gave you these little DMC floss threads uh, or keepers, floss keepers. And this is what I've done with my other two. I've gone ahead and wound them around and then written the number up here at the top. And that, you're not going to use this whole skein for this project or any of the skeins. So you want to only pull off what you need. So take your floss and you can, there's one end sticking out, so it should be easy to pull. There's a, two little slits right here, one at, on this end and one on this end right here. And there's a little hole right here in the top. You can put a ring on that and just pick out the flosses that you need. So what you're going to do is put your floss right through one of those, um, I don't know what they are, slices, something, and then just start wrapping your floss around all of the way until you get it all the way done. And if you leave the little paper things on there, then it should um, keep it pretty nice. So I'll set that aside and finish it in a minute. Now needles, you're going to need some needles. You can use one needle or you can use three needles. And I have gone ahead and um, I've threaded two needles so far with the same, with the different color flosses so that it's simple for me to just grab one or the other. But there are different color needles, different kinds of needles available. These are embroidery needles and they're different sizes. Um, there's also upholstery needles and big eye needles, which helps me. There's all kinds of different Ada cloths and all kinds of different needles. So choose the needle that you like the best or that fits your hand the best. Today, I'm just going to be using an assortment of needles and I'll just set these out of the way. Here's another one. This is an upholstery needle. And you know, upholstery needles kind of have a rounded end on them. So that will help keep you from poking yourself like I do a lot. And you're gonna need a little pair of snips of um, either embroidery snips or some kind of a, a scissor. And today I'm going to be using a water soluble pen just to show you how to get started on your floss. Um, let me, or on your, yeah, with your project. Okay, so let me move these out of the way. Now this is your Ada cloth and the only way I know to tell you, I guess there's a couple ways you could do it. What you need to do is find the center of this. And with just a few few counts over, you could be one way or another, you could be a little bit short. So um, what we need to do is, is use a measuring tape or if you don't have one, you can fold this in half and make a little crease right in the center and then fold this in half so that all four edges are together and make a little crease. Another way to measure is to get a measuring tape and find the center of your piece. And so it's 10 inches 
So you know that five inches is the center. So using a water soluble um, marker, just put a little dot. I'm not sure you can see it, but, and then measure from the other direction. And it looks like the dot should be right here. So this is your center right here. So I'm just gonna make a little X. Now this is water soluble, so you aren't gonna have to worry. It will come out. Um, if you don't have this, you might try a light pencil mark or something like that. That's where you want to start your project. So let's look. Now this pattern also has an other um, letters, um, capitals and small letters so that you can make your own word. But we're going to be using this pattern right here that says grateful. And this is in color right here. So if you look, the DMC um, is the brand of the floss right here. And then the color number is 3607. And it's signified with these little circles on pink. The hearts on purple is number 333. And the, the triangles on blue is 798. So if you look at your pattern, you'll see that these flowers are pink. They've got the circles. And then the hearts are the center. So they're the purple. And then the letters all done in blue. Now we want to measure where the center is. So there's 140 little squares on this. So number 70 is the center. So you you want to go down to the center of this specific place right here and find the center. So probably 25 would be the center because there's to each one of these little squares is 10 squares, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So at 25, if you mark down, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, right here, and you go right over to the 70, that's your center. This is also iron away, so it's a friction pin. So you can start right here or right here, and then start making your letter. Um, it's called counted cross stitch because you're going to be counting the little boxes that you um, can see here and then putting your cross stitch right in the next box. And then you'll count over and see how many that you do there. And I, I'll do a letter with you and see how what you think about it. Um, also, you know, this Ada cloth comes in all different sizes. It comes up to like 32 count and that is just basically threads. You'll see two threads. Um, well, most of us won't see it at all. So I want to show you what I use. One of the tools I use, because my eyes are getting older now and I have some cataracts, but they're gonna come off in a few months. But as we age, sometimes our eyes do too. And so I picked up this little unit from Amazon and it was around $25. There are some little, uh, There's you could either take this band off and put on these little um, things that hook behind your ears, like glasses these things. I couldn't find them just before I made the video, but I went ahead and put this band on and it probably needs to be a little more snug, but I'll show you what they look like. But first I want to show you what they have. They have this little box of magnifying lenses and there's all different um, strengths. So you can see that magnifies that a little bit back there. Um, all the way up to that one that magnifies quite a bit. So you can figure out which one you like the best. Sorry, my nose itch. And then um, that lens goes right here, it just snaps right on, just snaps right on. There you go, just like that. Now this has a little light right here that you can adjust and the button is right here. And it has several levels. So you can see, 
it really will help you see some close-up work, whether you do an embroidery or beading or um, cross-stitching, whatever you like to do. This has been a lifesaver for me. And trust me, as you age, it will be great for you too. And the price is right. So I will show you, it has these little nose things right here. <laughs> Whoops. Looks like I didn't get it on good enough, but I'll put it on now. This also rotates in and out so that you can get your work you know you can put it in if you're looking down with your eyes or out either way and you can really get right close up with your work see my eyes anyway i hope you try them because they're really kind of kind of a cool thing you know anything that will help you is a good thing so i'm getting ready to um start some well actually i'm just going to cut off some pink thread and i don't want it to be too long maybe just a foot and a half or so so i'm going to cut that off and then you want to separate the threads so there's six strands in each little batch of thread so you'll just separate them and grab one and just pull it right out just pull it right out like that then take your needle, if you can pick it up, there we go, take your needle and thread one end through it. And I like to use large eye needles just for obvious reasons. There. Okay, thread your needle and you've got your two ends loose. Now you don't tie a knot with cross stitch. You, you just don't. You leave it like this because with the cross stitching when you start it you're going to cross over the tail and so there's no need to have big lumps on the back of your cross stitch now with our pattern and I'm gonna look at it this direction so I can see it but we're actually going to use the blue because we're going to work on the letters so where we we found right here the center is the, ma the match to the center is right here. So we are going to go down one. So we'll go to this one below it and then over two, which is to my right. And it will be to yours too, probably. So if you're right-handed, this is the way you'll do it. And if you're left-handed, you'll probably do it just the opposite. But I'm going to start by going two to the right and down one so that's what you do is you count two to the right and down one you can use a um you can use a little hoop if you want to but you don't have to you can just use just hold it in your hand and scrunch it up now on the back i want to leave the tail just a little tail not a big long one and then go back down in the hole opposite like this and pull it through. Oh, I pulled it all the way through. Okay, here's what you do. You go underneath, right up through the hole that you want to go through and leave a little tail. And you wanna hold on to that kind of firm because it's easy to pull out the, at first. And then go back down right across diagonally from it. Now take your next cross stitch and go up right to the side like this and then back down. Now by this time our tail is pretty well secured. It's not going anywhere because I'm not going to pull on it at all. Okay, now we're going to do the one right next to it starting with the left hand side and down to the right corner and then up to the left corner to the right upper corner now we have two done 
and it looks like we need to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we just keep going up through the upper left hand corner down to the lower right hand corner, then up through the left bottom corner. Sometimes you have to feel around a little bit. And then up through the right and upper corner. And just keep doing that and until you end up with that row. It's pretty simple. I know I've tried to teach my grandkids to do it, but they want to sew around. And this is not an around. This is a down and down and up kind of a motion. Try not to put the needle through any of the threads, just right through the hole. Because then if you do, it, it kind of distorts it a little bit, so you don't want to do that too much. It is easy to do. See how you can kind of go up through there? But you don't want to do that. You want to put it right in the hole itself. Okay, and anyway, you just keep going. So I'll do that, and then we'll do another row. Okay, I've done the first 10. Now what do we do? So I'm gonna turn it over. I don't have enough thread on here to start another row, so I need to finish finish this off. So what I'm going to do, now here's my starting thread right here, and it looks like I've made a little loop right there. You'll wanna be careful not to do that if you can, but it happens. So um, take your thread and just weave in and out of what you've already stitched on the back. And then just trim it off. Looks pretty good. And you can also trim off the starting. And it looks nice on the back too. But not as nice as the front. Okay, so time to get more thread. So I'll just pull out another Oops, another strand and thread my needle and start on over. Okay, I have my needle ready. And in looking at the pattern right here, we can count over one, two, three, and then start here. Or we can do up, go up and do this section right here. So maybe we'll do, let's see, let's do this right here first. So we're going to count one, two, three, four. So four over and one up. And then we're going to, to cross stitch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So three over would be one, two, three over. It would be the fourth one over and the first one above it. So I'm going to start there, oops, okay, leave a little tail and take my first stitch. And actually, I just did something there that, that I didn't show you before. So, um, take your stitch up, I just pulled the thread through and hold it on the back, and then go down. And it's, it's best not to do what I just did on the first. Okay. I want to make sure that these are the same length, too. That the tails are the same length. Because I don't want them to pull through. Okay, so I'll hold that. And I'm going to cross stitch right across the top. To the, to the right. Okay, and then we needed to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven down. So we've got two, one, two, and then, oops, right to the third one here, three. Okay, and this is what I do and it makes it go a lot faster. I'm not saying it's right or wrong because I really don't know, but it's what I do. And when I don't have as heavy of or stiff as an eight o'clock, it makes it a lot better but I go down in the right-hand side and come up on the left-hand bottom side and then across and, and down. 
and for me it seems like it goes faster. Then come up on the right hand, left side to the, let's see, to the left side, across to the right corner, and just through like that. Rather than going up and down, up and down, I do a little cross, across, and it looks like this on the back where it has a little line that goes across. So that's four, five, and then come back up where I went down. Just watch your threads so they come through together. And seven. Okay, that may not be the best way for you, works for me, but I'll go a little bit slower. Okay, so we have that very first part done right there. That looks like this. So this line right here is done. And Sorry, this line right here is done. Now, if you want to, and you have a pattern that you can write on, you can use like a highlighter or something like that and mark through what you've done like this. So you know that's, you know, where you're at. And then that helps you keep track. Now we need to go up to and do one. And then we can go over and go down and over here and go two more. So we'll do that much and until we get this letter all done. It's a matter of counting, that's all it is. So I'm gonna go up two and cross stitch that one right there. And then I'm going, because I've got this one done, I'm gonna go down that many. You know what, if you need to and you want to, You've got this water soluble can, so you can use it, you know. We have this one we just did, we're gonna go up, one, two, three, put a dot, and that's okay. There's not any cross stitch police, you don't have to worry about that. And then we're going to go right next to it and make a dot. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can do one here, this whole thing here, and then one here and one here. So um, it's kind of cheating a little, but I mean, who cares? You know what, it's your project. It's never gonna show and nobody's ever gonna know. And it's an easier way to do it. So give it a try. I'll hurry and do this and then we'll finish up. So I'm all done with the T. It kind of looks like a T and the back doesn't look too bad. Um, if you just cross, like say you're up here and you wanna go down here with your thread, the best thing not to do, you don't wanna just take your thread and then go in down here because that's gonna show through on the front. So take your needle and just kind of weave in and out until you get down here where you need to be and then come up and it will look a lot better. Um, now I think, let me just show you what we can do with this nifty alphabet and then you guys can make anything you want. We've given you this little paper here so that you can put your own wor um, letters in here to make your own word. And you can just use a grid, a piece of grid paper. You can even print them off of the computer and then just make your own. And then you'll know how many stitches across you need and how many stitches up and down. So you'll know how big of a piece of eight o'clock. It's all counting. And that's why it's called counted cross stitch. So if I wanted to make a V, here's the V right here facing you. You know, I'm just gonna use my water soluble pen and I'm going to just make some marks. So I'm gonna go right here, one, two, three. And then the next one is one, two, three, four. Oops, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next one is down three, one, two, three. So in the fourth one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now anybody can do it this way, and when you when you first start out, do it or or be brave and don't. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is your project. You're a beginner. And don't be ashamed of anything that you do. Always be proud of your work. Now we're on the fourth row, and so we're gonna come up one, two, three, four, and across. So we've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we're gonna go down 12. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So, um, and then we're gonna come up one, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then we're gonna come up one from there and just do two. And then up one from here, from the bottom one, and do three. So one, two, three, and then over one, and one, two, three, and over one and two, and over one and three, and over one and three, and it's pretty simple, and over one and three. And you can see the V starting to form. Um, this video is for beginners, so just feel free to practice or whatever you want. This is your project. And before you know it, you're going to have this. And to, you're going to need this if you want to make the project in the next video that will be coming up soon. So get started and just take your time. A good time to do this is when you're watching TV or when you're, you're relaxing during the evening. And it turns out so cute so start somewhere and just this is a small project so you should be able to accomplish it in just a few days so thanks for joining me today and i hope you come back next time when we make a project for our binder cover